Is an Ebola type virus lurking around in the state of Nagaland? Are the people aware that bats, which are hunted in certain parts of the state, carry the deadly philo virus, a family of viruses that includes the Ebola, thus possibly putting people at risk of contracting the virus? Well, scientists from National Centre for Biological Sciences, Bangalore, recently discovered antibodies to Ebola-like viruses in blood samples of humans and bats in Nagaland, signalling the presence of viruses that could cause hemorrhagic fevers, although India does not yet have a record of Ebola disease. The researchers, including Uma Ramakrishnan and a pilot Dovi, a PhD student hailing from Nagaland, analyzed the blood serum samples from bats hunted by people in Nagaland's Mimi village, close to the Myanmar border. And the results of the study revealed that some bats sampled in the study may have been exposed to filoviruses. And not only this, five of the 85 human serum samples taken from the villagers contained antibodies, which meant there was evidence of human reaction against filoviruses. And one of the key researchers, Dr. Omar Ramakrishnan, who conducted the study, spoke to North East Live editor in chief, Wasbir Hussain, over the significance of the study and how communities could be at risk from the virus. Let's listen in. Dr. Ramakrishnan, you know, you conducted the study in Nagaland's Mimi village, which is close to the border with Myanmar. And, uh, you know, what we have come to understand that uh, in contact with the bats, the people can have contact with the bats, saliva, blood, excreta uh, from a particular bat species. And this might uh, harbor filoviruses, you know, uh, which uh, you would like to explain. This is the virus that includes Ebola. And obviously, the possibility of people coming into contact with a bat species which might be carrying the Ebola virus, uh, it, it, it presents a very scary kind of a scenario. How do you like to talk about this? So, yes, yeah, so I think the first, the most important thing is that we shouldn't be scared. You know, I mean, I think that what our study has detected, that both the bats and humans have been exposed to something which is similar to Ebola virus definitely a filovirus. It shows the properties of a filovirus, but it may not be exactly Ebola, which causes, you know, the massive uh, outbreaks we've heard about. But what is really interesting about this is that it might be an example of where there has been a spillover or, you know, the a virus has gone from bats to people, but it has not caused an outbreak. So, but what we are showing through our uh, results is that by doing this kind of surveillance, actually looking at people, looking at animals, we can potentially detect spillover events. And no. doing this across large areas might give us a much better understanding of when spillover happens. And then the next question is, why does it happen in some cases and not in others? Yeah, right, right. Uh, you see, you have taken... You have taken 85 human serum samples from the villagers, and yes. five of which have con turned out to be positive. Uh, you know, yes. they contained antibodies. So, what does this mean? And does it mean that uh, you know uh, we cannot be complacent? We cannot sit tight? Um, well, I mean, I think uh, we definitely should never be complacent. Uh, I think that all studies uh, which look uh, across the world place India as a potential hotspot for emergence or spillover of diseases. And we have seen that most recently in the case of Nipah in Kerala. Now, one uh, aspect is to control this spillover once it happened, and that was done very effectively in Kerala. But the second aspect, as a scientist, we want to wonder, what is it that, you know, where does this happen and why, right? So basically, um, as of now, our data, our results suggest that while there may have been a spillover event, it did not, it does not seem to have caused, as far as we know, any kind of outbreak, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think we need to um, definitely create awareness, but there's not a simple one zero answer to any of this. Right. Uh, and we have to really work with teams of sociologists, maybe public health professionals, local stakeholders in really thinking about how to communicate this without being alarmist. 